we are live. My camera is not on because I want to show you my headgear. You look so beautiful with your shaven head. Yes. As blondes, we are both in a predicament that a lot of women and yes. just people are in, which yeah. is eventually we get to that point where it's like, you know, Big Brother week 12 where, you know, we look like drowned rats. Okay, here we go. Um, Faye has joined us. I'll get Faye going. Hi, Faye. Hi, honey. How are you? Hey. We're live on YouTube. I want to let you know that so you don't disgrace yourself, you know, um, unintentionally. Feel free to do it intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> um, my camera is not on yet, Faye, because we were just talking about the fact that uh, Nelly and I both were blondes and so we have reached that time in our cycle, if you will, <laughs> where... We were like, okay, regrowth is bad. What are we going to do? Nellie Thomas went, she went Mad Max real early and shaved. <laughs> yeah, now, gone. Yeah, she's not mucking around. Nah. This, week, this week was my week of desperation and I just wanted to have a big what reveal. What have you done? What have you done? Get in here. Oh, where am I? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm in Turban Town, guys. Oh my god! Yeah. Look, honestly, those eyebrows just um, take Sorry. over everything. Anyway, I was just gonna say they're they're to die for. I mean, I note that you've got your face on. Well, you have Man. to with the turban. Yeah. <laughs> there are no so cases of turban. Like you're having treatment. Yeah, there are no casual turban looks. There are none. Do you know what, though? You, you can do a turban. Like I, because I did the shave, because, I mean, for those who missed out on this, like, breaking news last week, mm -hmm. I got the dog clippers yeah. and got rid of my luscious blonde. <laughs> Don't you, me, Michelle Laurie, because I will punch you. No, you. I, I think it's great. Yeah. And I've shaved my head before, but it's only just yeah. grown back. It's growing back now because I want to grow up my greys. I thought, what better time? I've been trying to grow up my greys for a couple of years, but you can never get it right. So I'm like, just fuck Do it off. Do you think they're going you know, to kind of like, like a Play-Doh doll, they're going to eventually come back green or something? <laughs> they're going to be shoving a Play-Doh in? A Chia Pet. I'll be like, yeah. oh, I'll have like a white girl fro Ooh. for about two weeks, I reckon. Heaven. I'll never forget when my mum one day came to pick me up after swimming club. So swimming club was at the end of school because I grew up in Queensland, as you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, at the end of school we used to go for swimming lessons at the pool, which we had at our school. And, yeah, yeah and so I went out and all the mums were lined up at the fence, as they always were, but I was like, I was only about seven. I was like, where's mum? Where's mum? And I was looking at all these women and this lady stepped forward and went, Shell, it's me. And she had this huge blonde afro. This is 1979 ish. Okay. It was Go amazing. Shirl. It was, yeah, yeah, it was. It was, yeah, real shirl <laughs> stuff. But you know what? You with the turban, like I tried a couple of turbans this week because my daughter's got a couple of the, you know, the headbandy kind of things. Oh my God, I look like Bert Newton. Like I do not have <laughs> the face shape. For that kind of headgear, but you, you look like heaven on a stick. Thank you so much because I don't have the face shape for the shave, so I, I'm jealous of the shave. Oh, you totally do. I look, totally like I look like a pumpkin. I look like a nobody sees past this bit of you, the eyebrows and the and the lashes. Thank you. And Faye, do you know? Do you know that those those eyebrows are tattooed on Faye Younger? Oh, I do. I do. Oh, she does. I'm I'm very au fait with the eyebrow work. I've always been a huge fan. <laughs> now, Faye, I'm going to I'm going to start with with a little. I hope it's rare, but Michelle might correct me. I'm going to have a little whinge in a minute. But Go before on. before we do that, just for the listeners who aren't familiar with you, can you introduce yourself to our dozens of oh, listeners? Hi, my name's. <laughs> Hi, well, I'm Faye, Faye Younger, um, formerly a comedian, which is how I know these moles, I oh, know these moles, um, <laughs> and yeah. I have my own real estate advocacy company now. So that is what I do is advocate 
in any real estate transaction, no matter what it is, buying, selling, renting, oh. blowing it up, I'm there. That wasn't a very good introduction of yourself, Faye. That was shit house. That was I'm going to do I, I'm gonna do it for you because you please, it's, hard, yeah. it's hard to do it yourself. Faye yeah. Younger was part of Miss Itchy, as well as being a comedian alone and doing other things. Yeah. But Miss Itchy, and I say is part of Miss Itchy because Miss Itchy will never die. They will just get sort of never. um smellier <laughs> and, and moldier and yeah. um, oh, yeah. crunchier, crunchier. But they were just bizarre, so odd, such a strange, surreal, odd, strange, very, very strange act. And so the <laughs> fact that the they, Ahead right. of the curve. Of course. Yeah. Of, of, of every course, curve, there will never actually be a curve that catches up. But yeah. the fact <laughs> that they, you are now such a respectable real estate professional yeah. is actually mind-blowing to me. I know. It's <laughs> mad, isn't it? Isn't it, right? <laughs> hey, Faye, you've got something on your finger. Oh, yeah. It's your head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I tell you, Michelle, because she is doing the undersell, the other thing she won't tell you, like, can you imagine, A, you hear, like, let's be honest, Bok, you hear ears, dear Faye, but you hear real estate agent and you think, oh, uh, no. Yeah, they're assholes. Faye's actually, like, nice, ethical, <laughs> lovely person. Well, and I saw the announcement you put out on socials at the beginning of the lockdown and the yeah. economic thing that, just flew on straight away and the message that you put out to the tenants I just forgot you reminded me immediately of course you've got tenants that you're dealing with now people have just lost their job overnight and they're mm. coming to you for guidance and they're like I can't pay my rent and but you are also then advocating for the owners and our fay, you know our crazy fay yeah, in this situation it and smells like cheese yeah right and the yeah, message cheese, you put out cheese. No, good cheese, blue cheese, mulberry well, cheese. Well, the message you put out was <laughs> good cheese. cheese. It was good <laughs> cheese to put out. But the other thing she won't Thanks, tell you, can you imagine a harder environment? Like basically, yeah. long story short, just before the lockdown, like we were already in lockdown for our family, but yeah. just before the lockdown, we put our motherfucking house on the market and, of course, who was it going to get to deal with all that, like, paperwork? Other than Faye <laughs> and her compadre, Jodie J. Hill, also former comedian, now real estate agent. Yeah. What can yeah. I tell you? In the midst of lockdown, you can't do inspections. You can't do fucking auctions. You know, everything's gone to shit. This bitch just sold my house. Yeah. Yeah. What? It's awesome. what? It was amazing. Yeah, and a great nice. price. Yeah. It was, it was, um, it was challenging and, and, and really interesting. <laughs> it's challenging. <laughs> it, look, it's, it's a really different way to work. Um, so just, just being flexible and, and then working, because as a vendor's advocate, I work alongside the person that's selling and I sit down with them and go, okay, let's, that's her, uh, let's choose an agent that's right for this house, right mm -hmm. for what outcome you're after. Because it's really different. It's right across the board different for everybody. So I spoke to a couple of agents, but of course, you know, Jody, Jody's my little right hand gal, and I love her. And um, she ultimately, you know, sort of came to the table and was really just the right, the right fit. And she was so fucking tenacious at um, keeping those buyers coming through when they just all fell away. Um, Do you know, know it was, I really impressive. Know. I had a Zoom meeting today with some women who are doing a um, conference on leadership, women in leadership, right? And, of course, it was booked years ago and they've decided to go ahead with it and they're going to yeah. do it all. It's all online and everything and I'm one of the speakers. And I said to them, first things first, like, good on you for showing the leadership in going ahead with it because all the other gigs have been cancelled and it's really yeah. cool that you said, no, listen, we're going to go ahead. And in the course of our conversation, I was saying to them how I, I feel for people like we're performers, we've been to, on hold with Centrelink for three days. We've been through all this stuff before. We've been through losing jobs, um, losing high paid jobs, losing like life being turned upside down. Yeah. Um, so have you found that for you and Jody, you you have some resilience 
in this area? Like, has that been a strength for you guys? It's when when we when uh, we launched because um, we we launched alongside one another. My advocacy is very separate to her sales stuff. Right. Um, together we have a leasing company called She Lords, um, which is our baby, and we love it. And it's it's getting through this period. It will probably actually cost us money um before it we can turn it around again but um yeah that's that's sort of the heart and, and the soul of the business but um we started that right <laughs> right at the bottom of the economic downturn so there was no stock nobody wanted to sell buyers were really hard to find and pin down and we were i remember sitting in our this gorgeous little office that we had big chanel pictures and and these great big table just going what now yeah what the fuck are we doing yeah this but how many time. times have you had that meeting fight how many oh, times have you oh. booked a booked a theater and thought what, oh, what, oh, what oh, how many times oh, we've all done great. that we've all and can i say like months, actually we were really, really successful yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say, I can actually, t I could tell, like going through this process over the last, say, four to six weeks with Faye and Jody, who, you know, on the, their role with us is basically, at, you know, quote unquote, real estate agents. But I can mm. tell you, if we'd been dealing with, you know, one of the big boys, one of the mainstream kind of services, I have no doubt that they would not have been able to pivot in the way that Faye and Jody have. And mm. immediately got on to, like, Jodie within, you know, tw less than 24 hours of lockdown was going, right, I'm doing virtual tours. Here's a funny little thing through the house. Here's a da-da-da phase on to, right, we're going to switch to this kind. We can do an online auction. We can, uh, Like, that kind of flexibility is not something that you just have. It's something that you learn over years. And I think it's one of the things that yeah. performers are undervalued for. Like, we yeah. know how to switch it up. <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. It's like you're not going to take our audience away. No. That's the mentality of that, that yeah. that whole, all right, well, if they can't come to us, well, fuck it, we'll go to them. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we just sort of happening. power through. Yeah. I don't care if there's three people a night and I'm in Chinatown underground yeah. in a car park with some guy smoking, I'm doing my fucking show. Or you, never, like you never give up, you know, you never give up yeah. on trying to get no. six people there tomorrow night or, you know, you yeah. never stop hustling. You never stop trying. You you just never give up. You can't. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's really true. Some people that didn't know me from comedy had sort of said, you know, what did you do when I started real estate? What, what You know, what's your background? I went, I've never sold a thing in my life. I've never done sales. Never. Come on. Never, I haven't even worked at the shop. <laughs> you know, the only thing I've sold is my fat ass in a tutu. That's it, you know. So that, um, that kind of come up. from was bizarre. I mean, you guys, speaking of never giving up, I'll never forget one night because you were always late, terminally, terminally late, and you would just blow in at the last, last, last second. And I'll never forget one night standing at the Prince Pat in Carlton, okay, Collingwood, and we were going, where are, where are Linda and Faye? And you're meant to be on stage in minutes. And I turned to Lyndall McElwain and I said, where are they? And she goes, ugh, oh, probably waiting for something to freeze. And it was just <laughs> the funniest. <laughs> oh, my God, she's so right. It right? was so right. Like it was, it would be waiting, literally waiting for something as impossible yeah. as waiting for something to freeze. Yeah, the German concentration camp in Aspic. Got to yeah, set. <laughs> you can't pick it up if it's not set. Yeah, you are always just you are fighting the laws of physics at all times. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you always won. You always won. Even though I joked about it at the start, it is actually true. I mean, I think one of the parts of the story of Missich is that you were so ahead of your time. Like for people who haven't had the joy experience of watching Missich, you're basically talking about two fat old bitches who make no sense, who are completely like un-PC, 
on the edge, kind of like just random in the truest sense of the word, yeah. Yeah. selling tickets. Like yes, if you were, were, I think the best description I ever heard of us. Selling house. <laughs> Best description I heard, heard of us was we were um, the mighty boosh if if instead of pretty boys we were fat women. Yeah. <laughs> but can I tell you, here's what I, I found out like a month ago. I'm having lunch with Matt Hardy, beautiful Matt Hardy, and um, and he's a great comic and now he runs rooms in Melbourne and, and he just has inspired me so much. He's just a, such a good friend and he pushes me to do yeah. things that I he just said to me once, you should do live shows with Australian True Crime, the podcast. And I was like, uh, yeah, dickhead, as if anyone's coming to see live shows and fucking podcast. Anyway, fast forward. It's been such a big thing for us, yeah. right? So he's yeah. that kind of friend. But so we're having lunch at Pellegrini's one day and he was explaining to me that all, all of those acts, including the Mighty Boosh, were put together by this agency, this super agency in London, which I did, I never knew that. But Matt did stand up in London for a long time. So to me, that even makes it further removed because you and Linda were two women who, natural. I mean, right, so natural. And Linda okay. is 10 years older than you. She was already a suburban mum of ki three kids. And yeah. so the magic of the two of you then is so much more special. It's organic. <laughs> yeah. you it know? was bizarre. Uh, kismet. And, look, we yeah. didn't. We didn't start doing Miss Itchy. That was our secret stuff. That was the stuff that <laughs> I, I still have the most vivid memory. We were writing um, the, the I Can't Stop Burrowing show where Miss Itchy are in jail because they've brought down Australian sports. <laughs> this, you know, cut to the chase. And there's this, the, we're getting to this really climactic scene. They're in... Um, they're in a cell with a really aggressive, angry um, cellmate who's played by Kim Hope, who's, who we called Friggin because she used to swear a lot. She's all Friggin this, Friggin that. So that's what we called her. We thought that's what her name was. She listens to this podcast, by the way, so you can send her a cheer. Oh, hi, Kim. Kim. <laughs> hi, Friggin. Hi, Friggin. Yeah. And um, so there's, it's really this build-up, this... And it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. We're sitting in Linda's back room. Her husband's through the next wall asleep, hope, presumably. And <laughs> I'm pacing around the room and we're writing. And it's like with this really angry scene, it's like, right, that's it. I'm going to get her. She's done this. I'm. She's so dead. And then Gerda's line is, I know, I'm going to poo in her bed. <laughs> And the release of that tension of that, that big build-up with that ridiculous line, we had to go outside so we wouldn't wake the household with three kids and a husband yeah. and just roll around in the grass crying with laughter. Yeah. And that was pretty much how we worked, was yeah. crying with laughter. Well, now, <laughs> all these years later, as a 46-year-old comedian with little kids, I still draw so much inspiration mm. from Linda working in those years. You know, I used to go yeah. and visit her in Basie and her little kids would be rattling around saying, oh, I'm, I'm hungry. That's me now, you know. Yeah. yeah. And um, I didn't appreciate it or get it at the time, but now I think oh, oh, neither did I. she worked so hard and she got yeah. so much work made during that yeah. time in her life. It's amazing. Yes, yeah, she did. She was prolific. Yeah. yeah, still the funniest fucking mole I've just about ever met. The mentalist mole I'll ever meet in my life and I love her so much and I, I hope she's watching, but if not, I'll definitely send her the recording. <laughs> she's probably waiting for something to freeze as we speak. <laughs> now, Faye, obviously yes, at the moment, I know you're, uh, Michelle and I have been talking about that sandwich generation stuff, which you also are. Yes. In, sort of wedged between youngest children and parents and I know parents. your mum hasn't been particularly well so how's no. like ISO been for you guys um yeah it's been um yeah weird so my husband Ben has been doing the shopping for everybody um because I'm also immunocompromised I've got a really shit lung condition so i Pulled the pin like a week or two earlier before everybody else. I yanked the kids out of school and so did we. 
Yeah. yeah. So we, we just need to hunker down um, and still manage to sell Nellie's house in the middle of it all somehow, which was great. But, um, uh, yeah, so we, we've sort of been ISOing. Mum and Dad have been isolating and um, we take their groceries up once a week. We've given them a, a Google Home, so Mum's learning how to say, okay, Google, put bullshit in the shopping list, which is hilarious. And then I'll get a phone call from her and she'll go, and I can hear, you know, jazz music screaming in the background. She's I can't get it to turn off. <laughs> Same. She goes, my mom goes, it can't make my Google Home. It won't go. It won't go. So it, it will go. You Wait, just she turns off your internet again. She turns off the internet. <laughs> in WA for Easter. Tried to just do a quick Skype. Happy Easter, okay. Nana. All the way. Oh, my God. This is my mum. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> go, mum, mum, I can't hear you. And she's going. And I'm going, I can't hear you. We're texting each other. Oh, my God. And then I went, I give up. I give up. And I just hung up. I'm out. <laughs> what about Far my brother? Right, my, well, brother well, my brother, my brother my sends mum a video of his beautiful baby, Edie. She's 18 months old. And for the first, like, she's really starting to talk. And she goes, hello, Nana. Mwah, and blows her a kiss. Hello, Nana. Mum sends her back a text. I'm like, <laughs> Mum. <laughs> You can't fucking dream it. You yeah. can't text her, Nana loves you too. Send her a fucking video. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. My mother had some blood test results the other day and she needed, she was going to get Dad to take them around to the doctors. And I said, no, take a photo, send them to me and I'll email them. Yeah. That, that seems simpler than take a photo and email them yourself. Don't no, just yeah. send me the photos and I'll, I'll take yeah. care of it. But, um, yeah, so, you know, they're, they're coping, I, I guess, and um, we're keeping close but not too close. And, yeah, it's it's awful. It's awful. Yeah. Boys are twins. So I yeah. uh, just turned how 11 and 13. How are you going with the homeschool? How are they going with it? I mean, you live on a fuck-off property. Yeah. Because they've got plenty of space, don't they? They're yeah. not like little city kids. No, sadly, like, not anymore. Yeah. Uh, look, there. I, I put up. I saw all the posts on on socials going, you know, all the mothers drinking and threatening bodily harm and stuff. So I put up a little post and went, oh, "This shit's so easy." Took a photo over their shoulders of them playing Minecraft. Yeah, and and then just wrote, "I, you know, I, this homeschooling's easy." I, although I didn't realise how um, how uh, Minecraft heavy the curriculum was, but. <laughs> Who knew it was part of the Victorian curriculum? This I, I know now. I've been told. I'm and noticing then. that. I'm noticing <laughs> that because my kids changed schools this year for Louis learning mm. issues, right? And yeah. so their new school is very, very hands-on. Like they started their online learning early and all that. So they're Zooming once an hour. It's very full on. Anyway, the other day at Coles, I ran into a mum from the old school. We were so happy to see each other. We're chatting. And she sort of made out that it was really cruisy, the old school's curriculum. And I came home, I was like, God, it doesn't sound like they're doing much. Then I talked to another mum who's like, ah, we didn't get it all done until five last night. And I realised, oh, mum number one just doesn't give a fuck. She's just yeah, not yeah. Yeah. And this is, the, this is the thing that I'm noticing. It's like so much, I mean, it's so, it's such a cliche, but it's true. It's like this kind of situation brings out who you are. Yeah. You know, if you're kind of, if you're pretty like, you know, let's see how we go and they're only going to miss a few months, you know, let them play Minecraft, who gives a fuck, which is probably the right approach, but not my approach, you know. Well, like, also, let me tell you who I am. I'm a mum who's now paying a shit ton of money to the school they go to, so they're yeah. fucking doing it. <laughs> they're doing it. Yeah. Mama's getting her fucking money's worth. Come on. That's it. Yeah. yeah, you can play no, Minecraft. I, I, I don't know about the 10-year-old is like, you know, excuse me, 11, um, you know, you're 11, you're in grade 6. I wow. don't give a shit. Yeah. I just don't give a shit. There's, you know, nothing's critical, nothing's crucial. He's got a great teacher there. They're um, meeting, you know, Google Chat or whatever they're using and 
um, they're all getting together and you can hear them nattering away and, you know, he's, he's finished his work like that because he's a smart cookie. So he does it so he can play Minecraft. Yeah. Um, but the 13-year-old's in year eight this year, so I am exerting a bit more force on him. Um, and <laughs> he's such a drama queen. <laughs> is he the actor? Because I know one of your kids is actually an actor, right? Yeah. They both are. The little one more more so. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, no, Spike, Spike can throw down a, I can't do this. <laughs> oh. it's like, how long have you been trying? Three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, there's right. more tears in our house than fucking on Golden Pond. Like, <laughs> I swear to God. It's just like, <laughs> mate, it is only proper nouns. Yeah. That's all it is. <laughs> you know, you're not Anne Frank in the fucking attic. Like, right, you exactly. You don't learn proper nouns. And I don't even care if you learn them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honest oh, to God. Yeah, the, the meltdowns are just, just hilarious snot and tears. Oh, because yeah. Because he's like instantly brilliant at something. I don't know where he gets it from. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm really still at, but, you know. Oh, yeah. my God. Can I have my, can I have, I feel like I don't do this much, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I just want to have a very brief care winch. No, please do because you are you are fantastic. And plus, last week, Faye, we had a psychiatrist on the show. We had the beautiful Professor Steve, Steve Allen. Allen on the show and he, he had his psychiatrist cap on because none of us needed surgery, which was luckily. Like he, <laughs> and, um, so he went full psychiatrist. <laughs> and so we talked about the, the stages of grief and all of these things. And, and mm -hmm. as a consequence, Nellie, I have to say thank you both so much because I have been in acceptance for most of this week. And, and Nelly, you also Sorry. talked about the fact that, you know, everyone's like, reach out to friends, reach out to friends, but then what if your friends are fucking drainers? So yeah. um, <laughs> because I'm in acceptance, feel free, girl, because I am here for you this week. Go for Look, it. I'm not going to indulge in it. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons that I'm always quite, you know, in in the, well, not that I'm doing it much anymore, but even in my media work, I'm quite sort of wary of whinging about or complaining about or talking about the hard aspects of being a carer because first and foremost, being cared for is harder than being a carer. Like I get that. Anyone listening who's in the disability community, I fucking get it. I totally mm -hmm. see it every single day. But can I just say with my carer hat on, caring for someone with a chronic illness also caring for someone on the autism spectrum in the same house at the same time in isolation where I can't leave. Yeah. Doing my head in. <laughs> like I just, anyone listening, and I know there's a couple of mums in particular who are listening with autistic kids, and fuck me, I love them. Like their brains are amazing and they're brilliant mm -hmm. and they're incredible. But one of the hallmarks of autism is anxiety. Yeah. And difficulty dealing with change. Fuck me if we're trying to all cope with change and anxiety at the moment. And it is hard. Yeah. That's yeah. what I need to say. Yeah. And you know what? This, this situation that we're in is hard for people that whose kids are, you know, generally easy to get along with. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, you know, it's double, triple time. But... You know, my house is worse than yours, so fuck off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? The reason I mention it is because I have seen a cut. Like, I totally get it. Everything's relative. Like, there's someone who's yeah. in a far harder situation than me. There's someone who's in an, you know, it's all relative. But I know that there in particular, there's, there's I know we've got listeners who are capital C carers. Yeah. And I just want to say to you, like, I've had a re actually really good week, but today I've just lost my shit. Like, it just accumulates and it just, yeah. even when you're caring outside of coronavirus, every now and then you just lose it. You keep it together and every now and then you just have one of those days where you lose it. Today mm. is that day. For those listening, I'm with you. Like, I hear you, I'm with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm very new to the carer community. In fact, as you know, Nelly, I don't even, I'm not even quite ready to admit that I'm in it or that there's a person in my home who's on the spectrum, to be honest. Um, yeah. I am still in a position where I'd rather believe he's just an asshole sometimes and we can fix <laughs> it. Yeah, but that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> just thought you should out. Yeah. Sorry, you fucking idiot. up on that. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> So we're quite new in the uh, yeah. diagnosis, <laughs> yeah. and certainly that person doesn't even know about the diagnosis. So um, <laughs> obviously, so you know what? It's, like, it's hard to talk about being on the spectrum without it sounding like a negative judgment. Oh God! I mean, the the previous um, diagnosis, which I thought was not a big deal, the previous like, oh, you might have a little learning thing, was taken quite badly. And so, no, I'm not rushing to talk about this one. But, yeah, it's very hard to be all the things you know you need to be and to accept, oh, this is just coping with the change and coping and um, when you just want to start slapping and never stop. Not that I've, <laughs> never, I've never slapped in my life. but it's there's, that two, there's two yeah. sides of it because I think going through what we're all going through, which is trying to deal with this change that's thrust upon us, uncertainty, the yeah. world feeling unsafe, that can teach empathy for people on the spectrum because for a lot of people on the spectrum, that's day-to-day -day life. That is every fucking day, every lunchtime at school, every play day, every you know, this heightened level of kind of anxiety, I don't know what will happen, will I be harmed, who will, you know, will what will happen? The other side mm -hmm. of it from a carer point of view is going, you're the container. So if you're the container, for that kid, maybe other kids in my case or other humans could be, you know, parents, whoever, it's a lot of containing when you can't get out of the house. And that that situation, that containing is actually creating so much stress for everybody else. It's, it's yeah. like, you know, yeah, that is the source of so much anxiety and stress for everybody else it's um, well and anxiety is infectious and that's why yeah. we were talking last yeah, week yeah. with professor steve allen about yeah. you know one of the things i raised Faye, was that advice we keep hearing in the media of like you know ring you know two or three friends a day and check in and i'm like well that's great unless your friends are fucking mental you know? <laughs> Yeah, on the phone three times a day going, oh, it's you're going to be okay. And don't, like sometimes you just can't. And yeah, he was yeah. amazing because he basically went, you check in with yourself first. If you're mm -hmm. up to here, you don't call anybody. Yeah, yeah. You're just going to spread shit around. You check in with yourself first. And if you're cool and calm and comfortable and you've got a bit of spare energy, then mm -hmm. call someone. But you so can but what do you do, Faye, when you've got clients? I mean, you must have people relying on you in your professional capacity. You you can't really just go, sorry, I'm not I'm not in acceptance yeah. today. Yeah, it's you took it's all my call, everyone. I just block Nelly. Um <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's, it's all me. <laughs> the the biggest issue for us at the moment has been dealing with our tenants. Yeah. who are just devastated and, yeah. you know, their lives have just halted. Um, yeah. So, I mean, one of them, for instance, where we're working really hard to try and find him a, a flatmate. Yeah. So we're pulling out all stops. It's like, and that's normally a real estate agent doesn't do that. You take care of your own shit, but you just can't. You can't. And then we've got, you know, on the other side we've got landlords who are, freaking out yeah because their incomes have stopped they're in the arts so they've got nothing yeah. they don't qualify for anything you know they're in the line yeah. for job seeker which you know most of them have haven't done before yeah um because the sole that's, trade doesn't work and that's a good point though that you raise is that not every um owner of a an investment property is oh, an old yeah. couple who have millions in the bank. I mean, right. you know, I've had investment properties before when I was really struggling to cover the mortgages on both of them, but we sort of taught that that's what you meant to do in Australia to try and get ahead. And yeah, so yeah. A lot of people are only, are only just covering everything. It might and, be your income. Yeah. You know, it might be literally the only, especially if you're an, yeah, the client, which is a lot of yeah. fame yeah. clients, it might be your only income. So yeah. it's like, 
Exactly. You're, you know, some grey-haired couple in Brighton that owns five properties and wants to yeah. be a landlord pig, you know. Yeah. Such well, a- we, don't have any, we don't have any slumlords. Um, yeah. We, we just don't, you know. All of our all of our landlords are, you know, people that are, you know, have a, a, an investment property that they're sort of ploughing on, you know, most of their income into um, and that's supported by the rent that's coming in. And when their primary um, income stops, that now they've got two mortgages that they're chasing, uh, you know, and even just saying that it sounds a bit like, oh, poor them, they've got two houses. But, um, you know, they're, they're doing what they're doing to, to get ahead. And, well, you know, we've got... Mom- my mum lives in a granny flat behind my house and she lives on the pension. So she doesn't pay rent and she doesn't pay any bills and she barely gets by on yeah, the face right. of the pension paying for her medications and just her life. So yeah. I don't know, without an investment property or whatever, which she doesn't have, um, I don't know how a, a pensioner who doesn't have family survives. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what you're meant to do. Yeah. Look, we've got, um, I was on, I've been chasing and chasing um, one of the companies that we deal with that does um, landlord insurance because we insist yes. all of our landlords have landlord insurance and we make them sign a piece of paper if they decline to say, well, you know, we've been advised and we, we don't want to go ahead. And um, I, the, the bullshit answer I got back today from the, the major one that we use was if basically if the, if the landlord agrees to a rent reduction they are they they are forfeiting that amount of money, and their landlord insurance will not cover it. I'm like, are you serious? So I wrote back. I was really angry, and I said, "So what you're telling me is, I need to tell my clients to tell their te- their tenants stiff shit. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you know, they're they're out of pocket. So I need to tell my it's clients awful. to do the wrong thing. Yeah." Um, and that yeah. if they do the wrong thing, then we'll cover them. Yeah, yeah. maybe. And maybe. not even definitely, maybe. Can I maybe ask you, I know that there's probably most of the people listening, not all, but most of the people listening will be renters rather than, that you renters rather than landlords. So let's yeah. say I'm renting a place and I'm having, you know, I've lost my work or my work hours have been reduced, whatever, my income's been reduced. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've noticed among friends is kind of what I think of as zero to 100. So they're like, I want no rent or full rent, whereas it seems to me to be more sensible to be trying to negotiate something in the middle. Yeah. I think that's right. And how do you go about it? Um, you, you talk with your property manager. Um, first, because they're your point of contact. I see the person um, that's the real estate agent, not the landlord. Yeah, itself. yeah. No, no, because most people deal with their with their property manager. They're they're the intermediary between them and the landlord. Um, if you've got direct contact with your landlord, that's fine too. But um, can most... I just say on that level though, before you yeah. go on, and you are, and I hundred percent hand on heart say this with without a sense of irony. You and Jody are exceptions. Because yeah. having worked in homelessness sector before I went into comedy and been around that sector a bit, a lot of real estate agents are assholes. So trying to deal yeah. with your property manager yeah. can be really difficult. So how well, can you be sort of formal and firm without being over the top? Uh, it's We've done a lot of advocating this week actually. We've had a lot of people reach out that, that aren't with us just going, oh, my God, I'm not getting any any leeway. And so we've just sort of given them a script to go back with and, and just say, here's what I can afford, here's my situation. Um, please ask the landlord to to speak to their insurer um, because that's we've got to exert um, some force on the insurers who are, you know, giving these, I mean, that, that response I got today was utter horseshit yeah. and made me really angry, you know. Yeah. It's all or nothing. It's a fuck off. That you can't work yeah. like that. Um, yeah. And the banks too. We really need to be exerting some force on the banks because you know it's all well and good to to have a reduced um, capacity to pay back, and then the banks are saying, "Well, it's 
you know, we can we can, you you can have six months off. But what yeah. they're not saying out loud is all of that interest is compounding. That's right. So your moon payment at the end is going to be massive. And and, and as you just, can we just pause there for a sec, Faye, because I think it's really important again for anyone listening. And I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who's in this situation, who is asking for a pause. Make no mistake, this is not charity from the bank. They no, love you. No, no, they exactly. Make six months worth of interest off you, compounding. It's compound, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I've, had pause, I've had a pause before, and I had a yeah. pause for three months, and then I had I had to negotiate it, and then my negotiation was then to repay that missing amount in the following three months. So yeah. That was what I negotiated, but that was the pressure was put on me to do that. So, uh, yeah. yeah, for me, the following three months were pretty intense. But so yeah. at least, so again, at least I had an understanding going into this period of time of what that meant. But for yeah. a lot of people, this is the, their first time at this rodeo. Yeah, you know? So yeah. I know it sounds on the news like, oh, my God, that is so yeah. wonderful. Thank you. I don't have to worry about my mortgage for three months. But, no, that's the not what I it reported in the no. media. Yeah, like the banks are doing you a favor. Yeah. And look, yeah. if you need to pause your mortgage, pause it. Like, no yeah. question, do that before losing your house. Yeah, but yeah. don't do it unless you absolutely have to because it's, it's going to cost you money. It's the same yeah. as the superannuation option the idea that you can tap into some of your super. Mm -hmm. AMP already just cancelled my. Uh, life insurance, and you know, I've got like not millions, but I've got like a lot of life and a lot of super with AMP, but only because I haven't contributed the extra amount in the last year or something because I haven't had a big job they anymore. Canceled. They just cancelled my life insurance, so I've they been did the same with actually. Yeah, right. So I've been paying yeah. money into AMP Sorry, for wow. probably fifteen years and a lot yeah. of money. Yeah, and they cancelled my. Life. What? I haven't tapped into it. I haven't taken any money out of it. But can yeah. you imagine? Yeah. So you have to be so careful with that because if you take money out of your super and you get below a certain rate in there, a certain amount of money, they'll strip you of a lot of advantages. Yeah. 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 Now, Faye, because yeah. I, I, I feel like the fat controller in the middle, um, <laughs> I'm going to come back to the mortgage. But can I just go back to the renting for a moment? Like let's just yeah. assume listening if i ring my agent let's say it's one of the big you know it's jealous craig or i don't know it's one of the big kind of mainstream agents and i ring them and say look my rent's normally 500 dollars a week i've lost my job i can afford to pay you know 290 um otherwise i'm going to need to move out or like how do i how would you approach it let's say you're ringing me and i'm the real estate agent do you go like desperation or do you just go frank or do you just like facts. how do you handle it just facts take just all the, facts. take as much emotion out of it as you can okay. because that that escalates and colors what you're saying yeah um, just stick to the facts and you know ask for um for, for some relief i mean you can't be evicted you flat out cannot yeah. be evicted during this time but that that's also not a get out of jail free card either that doesn't mean yeah. sit there and pay nothing um if you can afford to pay something work with your with your landlord and and um find a good solution but know that on the other side they're up shit creek as well because their insurers are telling them no yeah can i say something and then ask a question dusty uh points out that harcourts sent him a how to apply for super releases when they called to to ask for yeah. rental help. Um, yeah. They said them so a legal. Legal, Right. But also, so Faith, so what does happen if we say to ourselves, okay, they can't evict me, so I'm just going to sit here under my doona and just do nothing for six months or whatever, what what does that mean? What happens? What happens Is at that the accumulating? end? Yeah. What, what happens? Well, I mean, ultimately, you know, the owner will take you to VCAT. Right. Um, there'll be some kind of judgment against you eventually. What it does is it really makes the next rental that you go for really difficult to get yeah. because when, as a property manager, when you're um, screening someone, we've, we've got new tenants moving into a beautiful place that we've got um, next Tuesday. So we managed to lease that out during all of this horseshit as well. 
um, and they're divine, that um, to, for them to qualify for this property, it's it's a really invasive amount of information that we get. We get your bank balance. We get your um, speak to your your employer, your past employer, your property managers, um, your boss, rental references. All yeah, that and, and they're really really full on. And you yeah. know, we get a full rundown of of every time you've paid rent. If you've been late, that's that's noted. So. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it from just a numbers point of view, a lot of people wouldn't qualify for a house. So Jody and I don't look at it that way. We we kind of we tend to look at it a little bit more organically, yeah. And we trust our gut, but we're little and we can afford to do that a bit more. But in that case, the the ideal scenario, what I'm hearing you say, and we fully cognizant that this is not always possible, but the ideal scenario is that you talk to your property manager. If you can't talk to your property manager, you try and talk to the person who owns the house, i.e. your landlord, and mm. you say, I'm getting new start or whatever the fuck they're repackaged it as. It's, you know, $350 a week. I'll give you 200 of that, but that's all I've got. And um, I'm doing the absolute best that I can. And as soon as I get work, I'll pay the full amount. And can we try and work this out reasonably as, as human to human? Yeah, exactly. And look, there's the, the Dan Andrews announced yesterday. I call him Dan. We're real close. He likes it. <laughs> he, loves, he actually he likes a lot of things. He does. <laughs> um, there was a talk of, of a, another um, stimulus payment for people that are paying more than 30% of their income. And realistically, for a lot of people, that's, of yeah. that's huge numbers. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. A lot of people are paying more than 30 percent. So when I, just going back, body more than 20 years when I worked in homelessness, so our definition of being at risk of homelessness was mm -hmm. being in um, accommodation stress or, or stress, like either your mortgage, usually not a mortgage, usually rent. Yeah. Is, if it's more than 30% of income, then you're in danger. Yeah. And really interesting how quickly that shifted. It was, you know, by what? The early 2000s, it was just normal for you to be paying oh, yeah. 40 yeah. 50 of your income on your housing, which is actually a really dangerous knife edge way to live. Yeah. Honestly, if, if I had to rent one of our properties at the moment with my income the way it is right now, you'd be screwed. I'd be up shit creek. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I remember I was renting on. You know, the toilet. Sorry, girl. I, mean, I was renting. I remember the old days when we were when I was starting out in comedy, you know, and I was hanging out yeah. with you guys and we were gigging. I mean, I was renting on the dole, and Adrian and I were both on the dole, and the dole yeah. hasn't really gone up since. And we were renting in oh. St Kilda, and I think my budget was about six hundred dollars a month. That was my yeah. limit for rent. Can you imagine? I mean, what what's what's average rent in Melbourne now? What you know? What are we talking a month now? I think our average is probably two and a half to three grand a month. Oh my god! How yeah. Hard? That that would be our average. Yeah. Yeah, it's horrifying. We've got you know little one bedders with um, really sweet, um, you know, people in um, hospitality who are now freaking out because they've lost their jobs as well. Overnight. Overnight. Yeah. 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 Some of them qualify for um, job seeker. No, job keeper or job whatever. Keeper. But they're on hold. They're literally on hold for days. Yeah. I mean, it's great yeah. that everyone, you know, that they qualify and that the government's offering these packages. But, like, by the time that money gets to your account, in that yeah. time you've got to be borrowing begging, yeah. um, you've got debts mounting. Like it's so stressful, isn't it, to just be really oh, yeah. with you to say, I'm sure I qualify but no one's returning my calls and I, yeah. the website's crashed and all of that, you know. Yeah. I spoke to one of, our, uh, one of our guys yesterday who's, you know, in that, that scenario. He's, um, um, we've, he's now got a new flatmate so that's great. So there's... A little relief there well at least half the rent is relief for him now yeah um, and but but he's still waiting on payment and he still doesn't know if he's getting job seeker or job saver or whatever yeah. so and the money that he does get is still not due to come in 
for, you know, another two weeks. So luckily for him, his landlord is um, just, look, we don't have a shitty landlord. They've all been amazing and, and most of them actually reached out to us before we even got to them. Oh, um, nice. What do I need to do? Um, are they okay? But it's the not knowing play, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, exactly. It's the not knowing. Like it's the being yeah. intent sitting there going, well, maybe like I probably will get my job seeker or my job keeper. I yeah. probably will get back paid. My landlord probably will negotiate. But there's a lot of fucking probably's in there. When you <laughs> and in the meantime, I've still got my light bills come in and my okay. car regos come in and all this other shit. Just a little note to park there. The thing I've noticed already, because we, same as you, Faye, and actually Michelle as well, we've been in lockdown probably like a little bit longer than other people because of my daughter's illness. And, yeah. oh, my God, how much my bills have gone up. Yeah. You think of like when you've got, you know, three, four, five people in the house all day when at least one or two of them are usually not in the house, you're using a lot more yeah. Electricity. Uh, everybody that lives within about a 40k radius of me heard me screaming at everybody to get off the fucking internet. Yes. Oh, God. Yesterday morning. Oh, my God. And how are you yeah. going with garbage, by the way? Am I the only person drowning under garbage? Like, oh, no. I have drowning. to go out and find, I've got my yeah. favorite bins around the neighborhood where I'm just like depositing <laughs> garbage. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Colin next door, he's a, he's a single guy um, in his 60s, retired. I've already been, like, I slipped the note under his thing going, I just, we just need to use your bins. Is that all right? Colin. Like, yeah, totally fine. Oh, yeah. Everything over the fence. Oh, yeah, gay guys. <laughs> their bins are excellent real estate right now. Gay old men. Generator. Now, just going back to, and forgive me, renters, Forgive me for being a bourgeois pig, but let's say you do have a mortgage, as all three of us do. Yeah, I'm no financial advisor, but the first thing I did, I did not want to do the suspended payments for the reasons that we've talked about, um, but I rang the bank, sat on hold for two and a half hours, which is not as mm -hmm. bad as Centrelink, but still pretty brutal, yep. and ended up um, going interest only. Which yep. is another option. So, Faye, can you explain the difference between suspending your payments for six months and going interest only? Well, interest only, you're not paying anything extra, but what you are paying is that interest that would normally compound. So it, it's right. that a little way of you're not getting ahead, but you're not slipping behind. Behind. And, and that's the big thing. If you can avoid right. slipping behind, um, it'll just make... Make it easier to to transition back when you get to the the other side of this crap. Do and you know you what? Yeah. It's it's what I'm now thinking of as the Steve Allen approach. So again, our professor that we keep talking about, he said, yeah. you know, it's like Michelle and I were talking about the fact that we're eating more, we're drinking more. You know, I even started smoking. I stopped again. You know, I'm doing shit that we're not supposed to do because we're all freaking out. And I thought he was going to say, stop doing that. And he just said, just don't get worse. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you're drinking a bottle of wine a day, don't drink a bottle and a half. Stay at a bottle. And I yeah. thought, oh, my God, that's such good advice. And it's a sort of similar, weirdly similar thing with the mortgage. Just try yeah. not to get behind, try not yeah. to end up in a hole that you've yeah. got to get yourself out of. The banks will be under pressure to, um, to give some people relief, but... They're not going to give it voluntarily. No. And that, that's really shitty. I mean, you know, and I'm just waiting for the news of their next, um, you know, when they post their their quarterly results and their, you know, how much they've made for their their um, shareholders and, and all that sort of stuff. And oh, the only way that you can sort of look at all of this shit and feel okay is to check in and, and have a look at what's happening in the U.S., Right, absolutely. Well, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, again, we talked earlier about our friend Kim Hope, comedian, who, okay. right, who was working with all of us years ago and she's now living in London and she sent me a photo yesterday of a train station near her house and it was empty and she was like, oh, I've never seen it like this. And all I could think of and all I could write back to her was get the fuck inside. What are you doing? Get inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You're tall. But you're not that tall. Germs right. I mean, you're, you're tall and beautiful. <laughs> and, you 
And all I wanted her to do was get inside and she wrote. Get inside your box and wench. Right. Yeah, she wrote <laughs> I'm all right. My housemate does all the shopping. It's all right. But, you know, absolutely. I think of, yeah, you know, we are so lucky right now. And that's yeah. my coping mechanism. And it always has been. Yeah. Well, for this is, I keep saying to people, but what about these other people? My, when I say people, I mean my family. But what about these other people? Even the other day, this is so weird, but I've really clung on to it. I read this amazing story about the SB Hotel, which, again, is part of oh. our heritage as comedians, right, oh. in Melbourne. Where I started. Same, right? We all did gigs yeah. there, part of our heart. And it was derelict for years, and this group of men bought it. Now, what I never oh, knew about yeah. them, I never knew about them is that they're these four mates who started buying pubs 20, 25 years ago, same time we would started doing comedy. They started yeah. buying pubs and doing them up. And, you know, I just think, God, they must have worked so hard. They're about our age, right? Literally, again, just before this shit started, they signed the deal of a lifetime with this big corporation to sell all these pubs the SB, this pub in Paran, all these pubs around Melbourne, it was the payday that they had been working for their whole lives. Yeah. It's fucking fallen over. This oh. deal. And I'm just like, and now oh. they're all married and they've all got kids and I'm like, yeah. you know, like you must, they just must be looking at each other going, how is this possible? How, how does a virus out of yeah. China? Yeah. Do this to yeah. us after all everything we've worked, you know, like, and it's so because weird. As we've said before, it's like it's yeah. the simplest things are the hardest to learn. We all know this, like as a as a profound truth that there is no certainty. But we spend no. our entire lives, me included, like avoiding that truth. But that's yes. the one I'm clinging yes. to right now. That's the one I keep telling everyone I meet. And even my mum and my brother and my husband, I keep saying, oi, when you're feeling shit, yeah. just please, I've got to tell you about these four guys yeah. who <laughs> find this deal of a lot, this billion-dollar deal, and they have had it taken away from them at this moment. Yeah, I, I really feel for them. I know it's silly. They're not dying in New York. They have, but, but to me it's just my thing right now, you know. If, if they'd been comedians back when we were comedians, They'd be so ready for this. Yeah. <laughs> just you like, know, oh, really? Exactly. Everything just on that silver plate is gone now? Yeah, I'm used to that. There's more silver <laughs> platter. Don't worry. There's, there's always don't another know, silver platter. I yeah. don't know why, but the story that just popped into my head, probably because we're talking about the ESPY, yeah. was the, the story that's very sort of infamous within our circles but probably isn't known more broadly which is of Fiona O'Loughlin working toward, you know, her autobiographical sitcom for fucking years, like more was due to air them going, nah, <laughs> not only did they not put it on, they wouldn't let her put it on because they yeah. own it. Yeah. So it's kind of, I mean, that's not for me to make light of the four guys with the hotel, but I think no. they, you're right in the sense that in our industry we're a little bit more used to that, like it's still a gut punch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. she goes, you know? Yeah, there's a reason I'm a real estate agent now and not yeah. still kind of comedy. <laughs> okay, but it's a different I, kind of gut punch. May I? Now, this could be a whole other show that would go all night, but may I tell you another great story about the SP? Yes. One, yeah. night, one night I'm a young comedian and I'm there on a Tuesday night and I go into Trev's office out the back and... And I creep in there like a little kitten who's not sure if they're really allowed to be in there. And there is Fleety. And Fleety is <laughs> Fleety is calm, if you get my meaning. He's calm. <laughs> so docile. But he is actually in pain because he's lost a feeling. And he's he's sort of there at Trev's desk in the office. And Trev is the old, beautiful old hippie man, always, you know, smoking pot, who ran the room. And Trev is saying, all right, what are we going to do about this tooth, Fleety? You've got to go on. And Fleety's going, oh, this tooth is killing me. Even though he was docile, it was still actually getting through the docility, would you believe? And <laughs> I would. Right. And so it was decided and I was there and they said to me, they turned to me and said, what are we going to do about this tooth? And I was just so excited to be included. And I, said, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm, I'm happy to help. And yes, so, 
Okay. Almost. What we ended up doing was packing the empty cavity in Fleety's tooth with blue tack. Oh, far out. And we were using a biro as the implement. Oh, Jesus Christ. This was back when Fleety had his bob cut. Remember the page boy bob oh. cut? <laughs> and, yes, and so I held his face while Trev oh, packed God. with the biro, packed the tooth full of blue tack. No. Yes, and then Fleety went on stage and, of course, was wonderful. And oh, uh, I've never been happier in my life. So the, the moral of the story, if you are having some financial difficulties in the middle of coronavirus and maybe you get a bit of a tooth issue, all you need is some blue tack and a biro. And I'm saying, you know who's coping better than, you know who's coping better than anyone in the world right now? Fleety. Greg Fleet. Oh, no, absolutely. Just like. Yeah, not got 20 bucks. Got 20 yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's insane. <laughs> hey, can I complain? I'm such a nerd, but I know we've got to finish soon and I can't stand a loose end to remain untied. Yes, so my I'm love. So I'm going to bring us back to the mortgage holders and yeah. I'm going to come in with my bourgeois nonsense yeah. because I rang Faye actually for advice on this. Long story short, and there'll be many people listening in this situation, a mate of mine's a dancer. So, of course, all her work is completely gone and her husband's an artist, so they're fucked. Okay. And they have a, a small mortgage, but it's a lot for a dancer and an artist. Yes. Yeah. And I sort of said to them, okay, so try and go interest only. What's your interest rate? And they said, oh, it's 5.2%. I said, no, no, no. It can't be 5.2%. Like, send me, I'm thinking they're so stupid they don't know how to read <laughs> their statement. You know, yeah. like they're artists. They don't know how to do yeah. work. You don't know numbers. You don't know numbers. I've been there. I fucking know everything, right? So they send me through the statement and they are at 5.2%. I'm like, this is mental. Like even a kind of standard, you know, big bank should have a low three. Yeah. At the worst you can get. So how, are they, how is that possible then? How have they ended up in that situation? Well, so I they talked them through with Faye's advice. I'm like, you ring the bank, you sit on hold, you tell them this is fucking bullshit, you give <laughs> me a better interest rate, but also I need to go interest only. Long story short, they tried to get a refund because it turns out, yes, indeed, they had been paying 5.2% because the bank had not passed on any of the rate cuts to them. And they wow. kind of it's up to you to chase up. That's your problem. Yeah. yeah. Now on at least, I mean, it's still bullshit, but they're now on 2.9%, which would have, I don't know how much it brings their payments down, but hundreds a month. Hundreds. Hundreds of dollars a month. Yeah, so that's a like, massive drop. Especially if you've got time, now's the time to do the shit that you don't, none of us want to do, which is to yeah. actually look properly what what are the interest rates that banks are offering? Even if you can't change, to at least ring your bank and go, you know what, so and so is offering two point two percent fixed for two years, and you've got me on three point seven. What can we do? Yeah, yeah, and look, banks will negotiate. They do now because they've got, sh you know, we've got shame on them as well now. I name them and shame them yeah. when they're when they're shitty like that. It's, and it's they're, like, money. they're like any other shop. I mean, ring yeah. them yeah. up and say that you're talking about you're talking to another bank, and they'll soon come at you with another deal. I mean, it's really that simple. Yeah, yeah exactly. I know. I fear saying this because I fear I'm going to be mocked by both of you, fat moles. Why? <laughs> I do. I have sure. the barefoot investor script with my own bank. We and know you're I have pre-approval from X Bank at yeah. this rate, which is like 2.2 or something. Even if we can't get to that, it, you better make me a good offer. Yeah. Because I don't have to move. And guess what? It worked. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Banks are going to be uh, much more. Um, <laughs> banks are uh, much more. Uh, <laughs> Look at face. Look at Laurie's face. She's trying with all of her might not to make fun of me. And no, the only I'm not. not making fun of me is because you're there. You are my bitch at the moment, defending me, <laughs> bloody turban-headed mocker. 
No, I'm absolutely. I've got a headache. That's the problem. I've got a headache. <laughs> <laughs> the is too tight. <laughs> no, I definitely agree with you, and and I think your barefoot business is absolutely accurate. I've done the same thing. Absolutely. You we're all right with your new boyfriend, is what we're saying. Mm. You go, you go into the good night with your new boyfriend. Yes, we're behind you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. you and and services get involved. We've got your back. Thank you. <laughs> Lucky and gets that note with, with full knowledge that you're not a financial advisor, but you are no. one of those rare people who's like artistic and creative, but good with this shit. Like, yes, actually, you. knows how to do stuff. We mm. have to wrap up, but can you give some tips? Whether it's things like, you know, try your landlord, whether it's like ring your utilities companies, like, what sort of things yeah. are you telling your clients who are in financial stress at the moment? Just get things down on paper so that you you, you know exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, it, it's against everybody's natural instinct to make a budget when oh. you're in, in peril and stress. Isn't it because it's uh, so awful upsetting? You know, it's awful. Make up numbers. It doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. I mean, it really doesn't. If you can make a start and say this is what's coming in, here's what needs to go out, here's yeah. the huge disparity then you've at least got some some idea right. of where you need help. But just talk to people and reach out. And, look, Jody and I are on um, Insta and, twi and um, Twitter and all that crap. Just shoot us an email. We'll help anybody. You know, it takes three and a half seconds to go, here's what you need to do. Try this. Yeah. If you don't get any joy from it, VCAT are, are around. Um, consumer affairs are really handy. Yeah. They're going to be um, very busy. Information on consumer affairs. Very busy. And there is, and I can't think of it, but I'll give it to Michelle to put in the notes when when um, it's the podcast is published. But there is a really good free government financial counselling service as well who yeah, will do yeah. a lot of that, like, legwork with you. So if you're going to get, I don't know, your utilities cut off, no one should be getting their utilities cut off at the moment. No. Like if you don't know how to negotiate it yourself, someone else can do it for you and ring and go, yeah. you're not fucking cutting off the gas. Like, yeah, yeah, because, you know, going silent is the worst thing you can do, isn't it? You know, yeah. just giving them a call and talking about it saves you so much stress and it keeps yeah. them, I, that's such a hard lesson to learn and you don't, nobody yeah. wants to do it, but it just keeps everyone happy and it, it keeps the lights on, literally, doesn't yeah. it? You know what, I'm sure all three of us being... Um, performers, I can't be the only one who at some point has had an unexpectedly massive tax bill. And I gone, I've got one in the mail bag. I know I have. I just want to put my head under the doona and ignore this and the yeah. terror of dealing with it. But actually, uh, on the advice of another friend, this was about, I don't know, eight years ago or something, I rang the ATO and just went, I can't pay that bill. And they're like, that's okay. What can you pay every week? You yeah. know, can you pay fifty dollars a week? Can you pay twenty dollars a week? Whatever it is, and yeah. they can actually negotiate it. Whereas if I had yeah. done what I wanted to do, which was pretend it wasn't happening, it yeah. would have just got accrued. There would have been a fine. There would have who knows what would have happened. But I think, yeah. it's in, especially at the moment, it's the same with utilities. It's the same with a whole range of things. Like, don't avoid it. Yeah, uh, confront it. And if you can't confront it, get someone to help you confront it. Yeah, yeah. There's there's always there's always somebody that can help advocate for you. Yes. Whether they're uh, you know it, it just might be a friend, you know. That yeah. if, if you've got a friend that's a mouthy broad, she's it. Yeah, you know, totally. You know, um, or if you've got a, a friend who's a lawyer, hit them up. Yeah. And you can do that often for someone else better than you can for yourself. Like totally. my friend, yeah. I said to her, give me the fucking number. I'll ring your bank. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, exactly. Give me your password. Yeah. I've got no issue with ringing the bank because it's for someone else. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm dealing with a, a friend at the moment who's um, uh, who was uh, really turned upside down by a an incredibly unscrupulous developer who has taken her for the ride of her life. And she's now in danger of losing her house and oh, I mean, real danger of losing her house. It's awful. Oh, and um, as soon as I heard out, heard about it, which was more than 12 months ago now, I just 
picked her up, took her to a lawyer, you know, yeah. started ringing some bells and clanging some some chains and make a noise. People yeah. pay attention if you're making a noise. I'm so proud well, of you, Faye. I'm so, I'm so proud of you, Faye. You were just, I, I wasn't surprised when I saw that you were taking on this business. I, I thought, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. I can it's funny. It. it wasn't until I was actually talking to Will about it, um, our dear mutual friend Will Anderson, that I made the connection and it's about advocacy. It is. It's about having a, having a voice for, for somebody that, that can't speak up for themselves so that that's what you do as a performer, really. That's yeah. part of it. Yeah. You're, you're um, saying what, what people want to say or wish they could say. Um, and um, the, the real estate advocacy, that's what it is for me. It's mm. it's putting myself in that, that driver's position and going, Okay, if this was happening to me, here's how I want it to go. Yeah, but you've got the creativity and the flexibility. You've got this bizarre skill set, babe, to deal with whatever <laughs> comes up. along, whatever the situation yeah. is. And, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. better, you know, now is, is such a great example. Thank you so much, Faye. But also, Michelle. Michelle, it's one of those things that you and I have talked about many times before as well in terms of, you know, we talk about class in terms of money you know, an income bracket. But one of the things we forget to talk about is confidence. Yeah. And it could not be, uh, it could not be more relevant than in finances. Yeah. Like having the balls and the knowledge and the confidence to ring up AGL and say, actually, I need to negotiate a payment plan. Or well, it know- comes from necessity as well. And this is one of those moments yeah. where some of us are going to realise that we actually are the ones with the skill set to deal with yeah. this. Now, I grew up watching my mum make those phone calls. Yeah. I grew up watching my dad organise payment plans with the ATO. Like, none of this is new to me. None yeah. of this is scary to me, you know. Yeah. So yeah. this is our moment to shine, guys. This is our moment. <laughs> we got this. Yeah, we got this. We'll put all your links to your various things, but can I say... And I mean this 100% sincerely. She's not paying anything. There's no sponsors. But I, if you are selling or buying a house, like you need to contact Faye and Jody. Like you really do because I cannot stand, having worked in homelessness, I cannot stand fucking real estate agents. <laughs> and I would marry you both if I was allowed. Like, <laughs> I'd, I'd, let you. I, I'd have a go of you. Off we go. Like it's so, it made such a difference and I can't imagine even how wonderful it would be to be able to rent through you and not deal with the indignity that so many like rental Thanks. agencies inflict on tenants. So if you're in the market in any sense, you contact Faye and Jody. Thanks very much, guys. Love you both. Thank Love you so you. much. Bye. I would, I would root you on the side of a marriage and not feel one bit of guilt. <laughs> I, I, I do. Said, everybody, I would take you without your consent. I love Don't that. Know. I love it. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you.